Hello friends, Brian, Valve Body Video. Brian's Mobile One. Looks kind of like a city, doesn't it? And once you know the streets and some of the names of the different participants in the society, it's not too bad. This is what I would like to have seen when I was tearing this down so that I could make a more brave attempt at getting this thing cleaned out. This is from the Mustang. You've been seeing my Instagram posts and the like. Uh, this is the valve body and the valve body has about 19 different spool valves basically. The points that you got to understand when you do these is you tear it down, be careful, lay things out. If you mess up, that's where this video comes in. Each of these has to be able to move. So you've got a spool valve and you'll have hydraulics pushing one direction, splitting it from the cap, and then a spring that returns it back. So if you can move it easily with a screwdriver or a pick through these little passages, even just a little bit, then that's good enough. You want to do that before you tear it down and that way you'll know better which holes need attention and which don't. If it ain't broke don't fix it but it is a good idea to clean it out especially if you've had a bunch of failed parts, planetaries, bands, whatever. When things fail the grit gets in between. The tolerances are really tight. You don't see any rubber seals on any of this because it's just tight tolerances so if any contamination gets in there that's a problem. The ones I would recommend checking if you're not going to check all of them at least check this one here through this, you can see it's got kind of like a feng shui looking reverse balance. Anyway, I would check that. I would check this one and I would check this guy. Be careful on the edges with your pick and I would check these two and this one. Uh, those tend to get stuck. If you want to check all of them, that's great too. You can see that this one's reversed. I want to go that way. I have quadruple checked this. This is the layout. This is how things go. So I'm just going to kind of fly over it so that you get a good view. You can hit K or space bar to pause it. This bolt right here is from a distributor cap from an older Acura or Honda and it's used to pull out these. You can see there's a threaded hole. It's M4 by 0.7. As I tore this apart, I numbered them any which way I wanted to. No rhyme or reason. And then I just wrote down what it is for each of the things. I'm going to check the back ones back here. Like that. Oh, you want more light? You got it. Here we go. There's the manual valve, the booster valve, and a bunch of other fun stuff in here. And this one affects reverse quality if you can rev it or not. This one looks a little different. You're like, whoa, what's that? This isn't the right one. This isn't the same as mine because it has these. Uh, these are uh, pressure relief check ball valves that come with a Transgo shift kit. The nice thing about the Transgo shift kit is it comes with a torque converter alignment tool for your front pump so that everything's happy when you put it back together. No leaks. And the other nice thing is I really like their design on their flow control valve, uh, which is that little valve right there that can cause you to lose all pressure in the transmission and not move forward or reverse. And if you try to drive and if it does catch a little, then you can lose your overdrive planetary, overdrive bushing, your whole front pump, all that kind of stuff. That's what this failure was. I actually had a bunch of metal stuck in this one, this one, um, this one, and this one. And so we had to tear it down, clean it. As far as the numbering of what these are, what they do, I'll try to type that out for you in the show more. If you're willing to click like, I'm willing to do that for you. Um, or if you can read my handwriting, this is what they are. These work a lot like a fuel injector. They work based on pulse width and you know they kind of shudder or whatever and then that can create the desired pressure right here on your boost valve to give the right pressure to the right place. Inside of here in the boost valve you've got that guy and this guy. This one is symmetrical rotated. It's kind of cool because you can put it either way. It's got a bump on each side, goes in the back, and these two pair up to each other. And depending if these are working properly, they'll split them, they'll push this from the back, they'll do all kinds of things uh, through here in order to get the pressure where it needs to go and to boost the pressure where it needs to be. This is the thermostat. As you saw, it's number eight. And number eight, I think this one's torque converter clutch related, and it's just hiding in here. This is just the convenient way they stacked it. Um, your balls go in the pill hole and in the non bolt hole. There's no bolts that go here, obviously, and you can kind of see the tracks for it. It's got like a little channel that runs underneath 
So if you want to take this off, flip it around, clean it, all that kind of stuff, it is so easy to find where these check balls go. Special kind of rubber, Fittle I think is what it's called, so that it doesn't wear down. The metal ones they used to get smaller in here because they just spiral and just get smaller and smaller, so you'd really have to replace that one. If you do a superior shift kit, instead of the transgo, they say just delete this one altogether. Everybody likes this one. It should be there. It's funny how many things that you can change. Uh, speaking of which, this is your thermostat. If your transmission overheated and you never ever want that to happen again because the thermostat thing failed and caused this to stay in the drain position. Um, it goes in here. This is where the drain is. According to Hiram at the automatic transmission channel, what you can do is you can take this off, put that like that. You can store this in there and that way it will give extra push and close. Uh, but you can have this just be closed all the time. Because otherwise the way that it works is just like with your engine, you've got a thermostat. It makes it want to warm up quickly and then when it warms up this pinto goes out but you're relying on this your whole transmission is depending on this little guy i think i've covered just about everything bonus footage at the end